Hello my besties, how are you? Welcome to my DIY channel. In today's video, I'm so excited to make some bee decor using Dollar Tree items. You've been asking for a while, so here it is, <laughs> finally. <laughs> I'm sorry for the delay. And if you like this video, please give me thumbs up and consider subscribing. The moment you hit the red button, you become my bestie and then we are in touch and you never miss my videos, okay? <laughs> All right, let's get started. So you can find inexpensive bees at a Dollar Tree like these adorable pot huggers or bee steaks at other discount stores. In addition, you're going to need some nautical rope and make sure you pay attention how many feet you're getting. You wanna get the most for your dollar. Next time you go on a walk, you find a nice piece of a tree branch. In addition, you're going to need some sunflowers and daisies. I have a mixture here from the Dollar Tree and Michaels. And then any other cute color coordinating flowers like these spikes, for example. And of course, we're gonna need some greenery. If you like to attach a bow to your project, you're gonna need some color coordinating ribbons. Also, I'll be using a nice large piece of a cardboard box and a stencil of a beehive. Of course, you can freehand your own, but if you like to print one off, I will place it for you in my DIY Besties group that's here on Facebook, totally free to join there. I want a nice large beehive, so this is a two-page printout that we're going to tape together and cut out. Next, I'm going to put on the top of the cardboard, draw around it, and cut it out. If you are wondering what kind of scissors cut cardboard so easily, I'm using the super combo scissors that you can find on amazon.com. So I got my shape cut out and next I am going to actually turn it around and start from the bottom. I'm gonna start gluing my nautical rope and following the pattern. You want to glue that first piece of rope to the very edge. That way the cardboard won't show from underneath. And then you bend your rope and bring it back across. Continue gluing and running the rope from left to right all the way down. Make sure you keep squeezing the rope together so you don't leave any gaps in between. Make sure you keep the shape of a beehive and curve your rope as necessary. and continue the same process all the way down. So this is how much we got done with one rope. Half of the large beehive, I think that's pretty good. Let's continue. Okay, so here we are reaching the end of our beehive and also end of the rope. So that's just perfect. Let's fill in last couple rows and make a nice hanger at the top. It 
it looks like we still have a little bit extra rope so we can make another row here. Just add a layer of glue across the top. Okay, let's see how we can make this hanger. You know, depending how it works out for you, you improvise a little bit. Uh, but it looks like we can double up on the hanger here at the top. Yep, let's do that. All right, we are done. And to look at this, for a total cost of $2, you have this amazing large beehive. Do you like it? If you do, please give me some of those bees emojis. And as you look in the back, we did extend the shape a little bit, but this is great. You know, that way nothing is showing from underneath. Next, we are going to use a small piece of black felt and cut out a circle for the little hole. I simply cut out a square which I fold and then just round the edges. Glue it towards the bottom of the beehive. Then you are going to need another piece of nautical rope. I'm starting the third bundle and just go around the black hole, glue it around the, around the edge. And then cut off the excess rope. I cut it off diagonally so the thinner piece is just easier to blend together. This is just too cute. I want to be a queen bee and move in there. <laughs> so cute. Let's measure. So my ruler is 12 inches. So this is good 15 inches long. Pretty cool. Wait a minute. Where's my dog? Coco, come back home. She loves the neighbor's dogs. By the way, I found the cutest mug at Marshall's, Be Original. I love it. All right, so we got our beehive and we know that bees love to set up their hives in trees, right? So hence my inspiration, we are going to hang this on a tree branch, just like that. Attach it with a lot of hot glue so it stays in place. Moving day, let's bring the bees. <laughs> I love these pot huggers, but their heads are all in the same direction. So what I'm gonna do is set up one like this and another one across. So it looks like it's looking in a different direction. I decide to pull off the hangers from the back and glue the ladders directly to the beehive. One right next to the hole and another one at the top. And now let's make my subscribers favorite, the bestie bow. It is the easiest bow to make. Even the bow challenge person can make it. I have a detailed tutorial on my channel if you never made one before, but it's very easy. Uh, today we have four pieces of different ribbons, about 24 inches long. 
We have the ribbon pieces folded in half. We measure five inch loop, pinch it and hold it with your thumb. Measure another loop, five inches pinch and hold. Continue alternating your ribbons, as many loops as you like. Pinch it all together and tie it with a floral wire. And now all you have to do is just fluff, fluff, fluff until a beautiful bestie bow will appear. <laughs> That's all it takes. You can't go wrong here. Spread out the tails, fluff them up and mix them up. We try to put different ribbons next to each other, not to the same pieces. And these tails are relatively short because for my tree branch, I don't want it to be too big. But of course you can cut longer strips of ribbon and have longer tails that you can curl and bend whatever you like. Easy, beautiful bow that you can literally make out of scraps of ribbon. All right, let's see where we want to put the bestie bow. In the center would be perfect, but it covers a little bit too much of the beehive. And then uh, when I try it on the sides, it looks a little bit off balance. I guess it depends on your tree branch, but what I'm gonna do is help myself a little bit with this greenery because I need a piece of branch in the center there. So I'm going to zip tie this greenery to the branch. All right, let's spread it out. This center one I will use to attach my bow and the other leaves I'm going to wrap around the other two arms. And you know, you might not even want to add a bow because I can totally see a beautiful, simple, natural looking design here as well. So use my project as an inspiration and create your own original piece, okay? So I'm gonna tie the bow in the center here and then use my ribbons to cover the mechanics. Like for example, that ugly zip tie over there at the bottom. Also reinforce your bow with some hot glue so it stays in place. All right. You can still see my beehive perfectly. It's not covered and you can see the tree branches peeking through. That's exactly what I wanted and my big beautiful bow. <laughs> and let me show you the back so you can see all the mechanics hidden behind the branch and ribbons. Next, cut apart your florals and see how you like to distribute them around. I first just like to play around with the placement and once I like how it looks, I go ahead and glue it. All right, I think I like it. And just my trick, many of you know already, I like to bend the stem before gluing it. That way it sticks out better. It doesn't just lay flat in your design, okay?
All right, then let me turn it around now so you can see better how I decorate the bottom half of the beehive. So I'm going to cover the stem with the leaf and also with another layer of flowers so you can see only the pretty things there, okay? Those three spikes on the side, I'm just gonna trim them a bit because they're a little too long. Bend a little bit those ends and glue them actually all at the same time. <laughs> um, just lift up the leaves and slide them under. Use an additional leaf to cover up any other stems that are showing there. You see, only pretty stuff. <laughs> I feel like I need a couple more sunflowers there, but you do whatever makes you happy, okay? And now I'm just gonna use a piece of wire and attach a hanger in the back. And you tie it wherever it's needed to balance out your whole branch, okay? And once you hang your design, you look at it from a different perspective, you might wanna add some more flowers. Like I feel like I could use some more daisies here up top. All right, and now I need an extra bee. This one, however, it's out of scale, right? I like to keep my bees uh, about the same size. <laughs> so it uh, looks like this one is gonna work out great. I'm gonna put it right there on the tree branch above. I decide to pull it off the lily pad because it covers my branch too much and it comes with a little spring. Um, I think it's great. And now, of course, Tweety, the nosy little bird, shows so much interest and then just likes to play with it. Look at that. <laughs> And Coco is just watching. What is the silly bird doing today, right? <laughs> All right, I think I need one more little sunflower over here on the side of the beehive and I'm done. I hope you like it. I want to use that big bee for something, so I decided to make a centerpiece. I have this yellow pot from the Dollar Tree, some nautical rope left over, and some ribbons, same flowers that I used 
for the previous project, plus some extra greenery and a piece of floral foam or a pool noodle, you know me. <laughs> First, I just add an accent of the nautical rope around the top of my pad with some hot glue. Then I cut some foam to size. I love to use a pool noodle because you just get more bang for your back. Floral foam is getting smaller and smaller. Um, you might want to reinforce it with some hot glue on the sides. Next, you cut a party of florals. And before I add them in, I want to make a bow. I'm measuring the height of my pad because I don't want the ribbon to hang longer than it has to. So I measure four inch tail. Next, I measure about eight inches. I fold it in half. That's a four inch loop I got here. I'm gonna measure one more. Eight, fold in half. That's a four inch loop here at the bottom. And I'm going to cut the second tail. I'll tie it together with a pipe cleaner. A very simple bow. And now we are going to add one more bow on top of it. Repeat same steps. My bestie Snow, we don't throw away the flower stems. We're gonna attach one to the back of this bow. So we get like this bow pick. It's a nice pretty bow and it takes up a lot of space in your arrangement. That way you save a little bit on the flowers because you don't need to add as many, right? Look at that. Next, you make a green background for your flowers. So you're gonna add your greenery all over and all around the bow. Next, add your sunflowers. You want to add one type of flower at a time. That way you can easily space them out. Feel free to bend your flowers and adjust their height. Also, uh, you might want to glue your flowers. This is just for me, so I don't care. You know, I'll be probably uh, changing this up as I get bored. But if you give it to somebody as a gift, definitely you want to secure your flowers better. And then you fill in all the empty spaces with the daisies. Very easy, breezy, and now we just have to add our bee. And of course, my bee is like a little sign with the wind chime. Guess what? They did have garden stakes. I should have just taken the garden stake. <laughs> but now I'm going to make my own stake. I'm just going to glue the stem to the back. And let's see. Actually, there's a little hole. Why not utilize it and attach that right there? Add a dab of hot glue and cover it up with a band-aid. In that case, I use a leaf. 
You can also use a piece of ribbon. And just like that, you got a cute little bee pick that you can insert in your flower pot. And right there, buzzy bee flying above the flowers. Isn't that adorable? I think it's so simple and so cute. Adjust any flowers if they're in a way. And look how cute. Next, we are going to make a B sign for a fraction of the cost you would have to pay in the store. We're going to use a placemat. This one was $1.49 at Christmas Tree Shop. You can also use one of the pages from the calendar from a Dollar Tree or simply just print off a B sign of the internet. Plus, you're going to need a picture frame. And this is the easiest DIY. You just align your frame. Cut out your picture to size, put it back together, and ta-da! You got a beautiful sign for just $2, $2.50, this one. Uh, if you use pictures from the calendar, you can make 12. <laughs> oh, and by the way, that beautiful bee pillow is from Walmart for only $5. And look, it's double-sided. What a great deal, right? It's not worth even making your own. <laughs> Next, I got these black mugs at the Dollar Tree. I thought they were so cool and would match my bee decor perfectly. I designed some artwork and asked my friend who recently got a Cricut to print the vinyl stickers for me. She was so nice to transfer it over for me and within a few minutes, I had these great Raydan Inspire mugs for just a fraction of the cost. I will leave that artwork in my folder in my group if you like to use it. Also, you can find a lot of sellers on Etsy who sell these stickers. So I'm going to display my brand new cups on the tray from Five Below. By the way, what a great value for $5, right? I jumped for joy when I found that. <laughs> I'm gonna add a cute little tea towel from the Dollar Tree. What else can we add here? How about some honey? And normally I have honey from local beekeepers, but we ran out over the winter. So I just bought some in the supermarket and I'm transferring to a jar and let's decorate it a little bit. Just cut a square of burlap or any other cute fabric that you like. Um, I'm fraying it a little bit around the edges, putting a rubber band around it so it stays on the lid. And then I'm tying with a jute string and some a ribbon for decoration. You can tie a little bow, add a daisy, a little bee batten, whatever you have. You can even add a little label sticker from the Dollar Tree. I love these, you get so many for a dollar. It doesn't take much to transform an ordinary jar into a pretty piece of decor. Bee and honey decor is very popular, so be on the lookout. Maybe you can find any of these cute little pieces that I found. So inexpensive and they add a little touch, especially if you're putting together a tray or a vignette in your kitchen. Oh no, young lady, this is too much. Get out of here. Tweety. This is going to be my tea time tray. So what else do I need? Of course, some good cookies. <laughs> These are so good with buttery, with some nuts and chocolate and just a little.
life, my besties. So this is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos, okay? Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.